Let's add editing and deleting to the budget tracking app. That way, the user doesn't have to be perfect. This video is part of a series where I'm showing the process of building a Phoenix Live View app. It'll make a lot more sense from the beginning, and all of the code is available on GitHub with a link in the description. Recall that transactions are created in a dialog called create transaction dialog. It has its own path, this new transaction path under the budget prefix that we're currently navigated to. To edit a transaction, I'll add a new route to the same live view. Over in the router, we now have transaction ID and edit at the end of our budgets path, which we'll call a live action called edit transaction. The naive way to approach this would be to copy and paste the entire implementation of the create transaction dialog and its corresponding render function. But that would be hard to keep consistent. Instead, let's update the existing dialog to support both creation and editing. I'll rename it to transaction dialog and update its call site in the live view. So we'll rename to transaction dialog and move its render as well. Remember that this one's render is in a separate Heeks template file. Up at the top, instead of create transaction dialog, we'll make it transaction dialog. And at the place where it is called in budget show live under render, let's call this transaction dialog and remove this create prefix. The view should still work just as it did before. We've just renamed it to prepare for a refactor. Over in transaction dialog, when we validate our inputs, we pass a transaction in as the first argument to change transaction, and then the parameters that the user specified through the browser as the second parameter. But there's nothing that says this budget transaction has to be a default one. In fact, it can be an existing one. Since change sets can be used for creation and editing, our validate function should be fine just how it is. But the save function is gonna to need to look a little different. So I broke it down. When we create a new transaction, we're gonna take an empty budget transaction instance and pass it into the change set and then ultimately insert that into the database. If all goes well, we can close the dialog by redirecting to the budgets page. And if there's an error, we'll get back a change set that can show the validation errors in the form. When we submit with edit transaction, we're gonna take the existing budget transaction instance, run it through a new function called update transaction, and then if it succeeds, we close the modal by navigating to the show page. And if there's an error, it'll come with a change set that we can use to populate those error validations in the form. Since we're gonna need a transaction instance to support editing, let's go back to budget show live. A pattern that you'll see in live views that take in multiple actions is the apply action function. The way that these typically work is they register a little bit of extra code or data loading that's necessary for the specific action that's executing, ultimately stuffing that information into the assigns. So when we are editing a transaction, we wanna grab the transaction ID from the path and make sure that we can find that transaction from the assigns if we do find that, we're gonna put it as the transaction key under the assigns. And if we don't find it, then we can say transaction not found and redirect back to the budget show page. And we'll call apply action whenever we're about to display the page. So in this case, we'll just pipe this into apply action and it wants the params. Where params is this first argument of mount. Now I'll take this new transaction assign and pass it into our transaction dialog component. So we'll go transaction equals at transaction. And for good measure, let's pass the live action into the component so it knows what we're trying to do. We'll say action equals live action. Remember that live action was added to our assigns by the Phoenix framework because the router matched. And finally, we wanna make sure that we show this modal not just for new transaction, but also for edit transaction. You know, this render function for budget show live is getting a little long. So I'm gonna pull it into a Heeks file. So I'll just grab this whole thing and create a new file. We'll call this budget show live.html.heeks. Paste this in and we can remove the render. The framework knows by convention to look for a file that has the same name and swap that in as the render function.
And over in the page, it should... Well, actually, there's one more thing. In our render, we are passing at transaction, but transaction is only being set on the edit transaction route. Since this component is getting these properties no matter what, we need something a little different. So instead of setting transaction to at transaction, which requires that that key has been set in our assigns, we can pass assigns transaction or default transaction. And we'll steal default transaction from our transaction dialog right here. Putting that into our budget show live file, the flow goes like this. If the live action is new transaction, then we will not have a transaction set and we'll fall back to the default. And if we're editing a transaction, then assigns transaction will be populated and passed into the transaction dialog. Perfect, the view is unbroken again. Now let's finish up the dialog. In its implementation, we default to this default transaction. And then we validate by passing default transaction into our change set. Instead of all of this, let's use the transaction from our assigns and use that as our first argument for change transaction. If I make this a negative number, notice that the validation still works for the new transaction form. Next, I'm gonna add a private function called save transaction. You'll see why in a moment. It has the same exact body as our previous save function. And from a pattern matching perspective, it's gonna take in a socket, an action, and then transaction parameters. Now, another implementation of this is gonna be when we are editing. So I'll paste in the edit, and what this one does is it calls update transaction instead of create transaction with a flash message that says updated instead of created. Now, neither of these functions is actually being called yet, and they are private. So what we're gonna do is take our save handle event function and replace it with a call to save transaction, which will pattern match on the action of our page, which means that when it's new transaction, we're gonna execute this create side, and when it's edit transaction, we're gonna call the update. But this update function doesn't exist yet. It's really easy to add to our tracking module. So I'll find where we create transaction, and right below it, let's just paste in this update transaction implementation. It takes in a transaction, runs it through the change set, and calls repo.update to make it save in the database. And just like that, the form has been updated. So to test it out, I'm gonna start a new transaction, and we'll just make it $1, and let's make it, <laughs> I misspelled test. So how do I get to the edit page? Well, we can add a new column to this table. Remember that this table lives in our budget show lives render function, which we've moved out to a Heeks template. So down at the bottom, I'll add a new column and it's gonna contain a link that navigates to our budget transaction edit page. Now, if I click on this edit, the page shows up and it already is populated with all of the data from the transaction. There's that typo and everything. Now I can fix it and save it. It works, but I've got a couple of notes. If I reopen edit, why is the title new transaction? And why is the save button create transaction? For the former, I can simply add a couple of conditionals to the view. Over in transaction dialog HTML heeks, I can, instead of just doing new transaction, make it switch based on the action. So if it's new transaction, we'll say new transaction. And if it's edit, edit. As for the latter, what if we just called it save transaction? That's easy enough. So now in the page, we are editing a transaction, save transaction. And if we create a new one, and it says new transaction and still save transaction. With that feature out of the way, let's add deletion. I'll start by adding a delete transaction function to our tracking context module. So over in tracking, let's add delete. And this is so simple. Just take an instance of the budget transaction schema and pass it into repo.delete. This in turn will return either okay and a schema instance or error and a change set. We're not gonna be using this change set for validation or anything. Instead, we'll just be looking for, did it work or did it not?
Then over in the transaction table, I'll add a delete button. So right after edit, we will have a delete button. And let's break this down. There's a lot of code here. This is a button of type button as opposed to submit. So it's not part of a form. When clicked, it will send an event to the live view process with a name of delete underscore transaction and an ID parameter set to the transactions ID. Before sending this to the server, the browser will show a pop-up letting the user confirm before deleting the transaction. I'll show you over in the view. So if I hit this delete button, the browser asks, are you sure you wanna delete the transaction? If I say cancel, it's not gonna delete anything. But instead, if I go delete, hit okay, this is another handler that we haven't built yet. Uh, if you've watched the rest of the videos, you know that this is a pattern. This really helps me understand what needs to happen. If I take a look at the logs and try and find an error, we'll see that a payload was sent with an event of delete transaction. It was clicked and it had a value of ID and then this UUID. Yeah, so we got this event and didn't have a handler for it. Well, just like in other videos, we can add a new handler. So in budget show live, we can add a new handler for the delete transaction event. In the handler, I'll try and find an instance of the transaction in the live views assigns. If we delete it, I force the view to reload by navigating to this same page. I could have also chosen to reassign the transactions and summary values, but it felt repetitive. Now in the face of errors, I will flash up error messages. And since we're sourcing the list of transactions from the live views state, and since you can't load this live view unless you're the user who created the budget, it's not possible for another user to force a delete in a budget that they don't own. So this feels pretty safe to me. So I'll go ahead and run it, hit delete on test. And when I hit okay, it gets deleted and we've got some confirmation. Now, finally, I'd like to reduce the visual clutter in this table by moving the edit and delete options into a dropdown menu. Typically, this kind of thing would be built in a front-end library like React, but in Phoenix, we have JS commands. I made a very thorough video covering this functionality if you want to go in more detail. But for now, I'm going to add a new component, and I'm going to call it drop-down menu. And for simplicity, I'm going to put it in core components. So core components, and let's look for a place to put it. How about right before the JS commands? Now, this is a pretty big implementation, so I'll walk through it. It starts with a documentation block with some examples of how to use it, and it declares that it has an attribute called ID that is required, and it uses the inner block. This will display as three vertical dots until clicked, at which point the body becomes visible unless the user clicks somewhere else or hits escape. The inner block slot is a way of describing what's directly given to the component as a child. Other slots with other names can coexist in the component, but we only need one slot in this dropdown, so we'll use inner block. Now, I'm getting a little error here, which is saying that the toggle function hasn't been built out. This is because I haven't pasted it in yet. So there's these helpers to wrap around the native js.show, js.hide, and now js.toggle functions. And these just specify which classes we want to apply at different phases of the animation when we are showing, hiding, or toggling elements. With this set, there will be a 200 millisecond transition for toggling the body of the dropdown menu. So now we can replace the link and button with a dropdown menu wrapped variant using a unique ID from the transaction so the JavaScript can work its magic. And then I went ahead and did a little bit of styling and added some icons to these actions in the dropdown menu. And if everything works as expected, I can go into the menu, click, hit edit to start editing, hit delete to trigger that delete action. And I'll go ahead and actually delete one and now it's gone. Just like that, we've transformed our transaction creation dialog into a multi-purpose transaction form, allowed our user to delete transactions and tucked the options into a dropdown. This one's getting long, so the tests will be in the linked GitHub pull request. Stay tuned for the next video in the series by subscribing. This has been Code and Stuff. Thanks for watching.